Two minutes. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Montempo? Yes. Mr. Catali? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Line item number eight, consent agenda. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Montempo? Uh, yes. Mr. Catali? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have... These are not the police ones, so these are going to be separate. There's a bonus center. They're all going to no. be No, we have to do them. Yeah, because public comment. Go ahead, Wendy. Okay. Just... Ordinance 2019-10, Ordinance Amending Section 2-5 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Homedale Title Township Administrator restricting the appointment of individuals that have violated ethics laws. This, this ordinance has been published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Open for the public. Seeing no one for the public. Roll call. I need a motion. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Ordinance 2009-11 is an ordinance amending section I'm sorry, 2019-11 ordinance amending section 2-5 of the revised general ordinance of the Township of Homedale titled Township Administrator, restricting the reappointment of any former occupant of the said office. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public. Seeing the public, roll call. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pescucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Ordinance 2019-12 is an ordinance amending the 2019 salary ordinance. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public? Scott Goldstein, 24 East Long Drive. Uh, in the previous version of this ordinance, the salaries for the Township Administrator and the Police Chief were listed. This ordinance does not list the salaries range. That, that's correct, Scott. To answer your question, I guess, on why that is the case, it would establish the salaries for those two positions going forward by contract. Um, so that each individual who occupies those positions will have a contract rather than having their salary set by virtue of the salary ordinance. So basically you've taken off a cap on those positions? I'm sorry? So there's no longer a salary cap on those positions? No, the cap would be the terms of the contract that the committee negotiates directly with those individuals. Yes, but the ordinance sets a salary range. And without that range in the ordinance, they no longer have a cap on those positions. No, there's certainly a cap because the committee would have to vote to have a contract validly set. The reason why you have a salary range is if you have an employee who's uh, paid by virtue of the salary ordinance. You don't typically include employees who have contracts in your salary ordinance because they have a directly negotiated agreement in the same way that the police or uh, the white collar or the blue collar unions are not in the salary ordinance because their salaries are also established by a directly negotiated agreement. Thank you. Anybody else in the public? No further comments? Motion. 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 Set roll call. Mr. Montempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Okay, the next ordinance is 2019-13. It's an ordinance amending section 4-7.1 of the revised general ordinance of the Township of Homedale titled Motor Vehicle Towing and Storage. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public. 
Seeing no public. Motion. Motion. Yes. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Gatelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pescucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Ordinance 2019-14 is an ordinance amending section 3-21 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Holmesdale titled Peace and Good Order. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the Bolton Board and Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public. Seeing no public. Motion. Motion. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. Ordinance 2019-15, an ordinance amending section 17-4 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Holmdown, titled Sidewalk Maintenance. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the Bolton Board and Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public? Good evening, Ralph Blumenthal, 40 West Stony Brook Road. A number of comments on this ordinance. Uh, first of all, quite generally, especially some of the other subsequent ordinances, the primary motivation is safety and order. That's good. That's appropriate. But one has to think through the details of some of these things. A version or something similar to this ordinance was considered several years ago. And because of looking more carefully at it, it was not adopted. Those same issues still exist here. First of all, uh, in most of the township, as the engineer can test, the township's right-of-way is about approximately 50 feet. The actual cartway is typically 24 to 26 feet. That means there's another 24, 26 feet that is beyond the curb. In other words, there's about 12 to 13 feet from the curb to the property line. It depends if the street's in the center of the right of way or whatever. As a consequence, most of the sidewalks in town are on township property. One may question whether the municipality has the authority to tell private individuals to shovel sidewalks on someone else's property. Uh, let the attorney address that in due course. Other more practical questions. Consider Homedale Road as you go up toward Bethany. The sidewalk is adjacent to the curb. It's a county road, gets plowed multiple times. Where's the snow go? Onto the sidewalk. How many times are you going to require a homeowner to deal with that? Some people may be disabled. What is the risk? How do you impact them? Seniors. Another example here, down the street, Falcons Ridge. Sidewalk along Crawford's Corner Road. It is at the back of the properties. The sidewalk is on town property. Then comes a berm, which is landscape, and in some cases a fence. So I don't know how a homeowner would even get to the sidewalk. So there's a, in principle, yeah, we ought to all shove all our sidewalks. I don't have to have one, so it's not a problem for me. But there are all of these other issues that I don't think have been considered in the way the ordinance is worded. So I think there, there is a point here in requiring something like this. But I don't think this ordinance, as it's currently worded, really addresses reality. Thank you for your consideration. Anybody else in the public? Okay. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Uh, yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. Ordinance 2019-16 is an ordinance establishing section 2-34.2 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Homedale titled Township Brush and Leaf Collection, as well as various corollary amend amendments. 
This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in town hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Hold on. Okay. Jenny Blumenthal, 41 Stony Brook Road. We've been through this before. The problem with the brush and leaf collection, much as it's a wonderful amenity that comes along with our taxes, but the wording of this is, thou shalt not put your brush in the street. Well, guess what? The equipment that the town has is this lobster claw thing that if you follow the ordinance, you leave your brush on your lawn. Lobster truck comes by, eats up your lawn, makes a huge mess. And who is going to fix that? The only way to make a lobster claw thing work is to put your brush in the street, which is where everybody puts it, because nobody puts it on the lawn, because by the time they put it out there, it sits there for so long it kills the grass. So what are you going to do about it? I actually had the uh, similar concern. Um, I got some feedback from residents that, um, you know, there's a lot of variables, right? Our DPW does a great job in town. They really work hard every day, but sometimes they get off schedule and your leaves may sit out there longer than normal. And they blow into the street and you have the issue of the elderly and how do you get the leaves back from the street into the thing. So, you know, I, I see where this ordinance is going. I, I think it has the right intent. Um, but I, I think that maybe, uh, Chief, is that the administrator, maybe we could do a advertisement awareness campaign for some time before we move forward in awareness. I really don't want to start fining residents for for leaves and streets that are outside of their control. Chief, well, the, the uh, only, oh, go ahead, Chief, go please. Well, I, I, as you know, we, we don't look to fine anybody. Uh, these are the rules that are already in effect that the road department puts out that are just ignored because there's not an ordinance to enforce. So. We can't even go up to the DPW, we can't go up to the someone's door and say, please get it off the street. Now, uh, I don't know what situation, you know, every situation is different. There's some roads that you just simply cannot put brush on the street. You cannot put brush on both sides of the street. It makes it very dangerous for parking situations, for driving situations, for kids to walk or ride their bikes. So, um, Especially all, the neighborhoods directly in absolutely. front of the Bell Works and all the trees that they go there. You, it's like you're, you're driving both sides of the road. So it becomes almost like for the driver an obstacle course. So all we want to do, and again, we don't issue a lot of summonses, as you know, for, for these kind of issues, is to be able to go up to the door and say, could you please move your brush? Right now, we have no uh, legal mechanism to make you do it. You tell us no, we have to leave. And now we're stuck with the issue that's still on the street. Yeah, and I don't disagree with the ordinance. I just, like, I think more of an awareness campaign so people can, because when people sue, they put them in the street, getting them back to be, Tough, right? No, I agree. Landscapers, and and so I, I think there's we need a little more meat to this, just to kind of. I, I don't want the residents to feel they're being penalized. What they've been doing for the last thirty something years in towns heavily wooded areas, like where the mayor just said, but just make them aware so they can start planning. And we're almost in that fall season right now because by Halloween, streets are pretty well covered. With yes. Leaves. So and chief, chief, can you can you help get an article together or go out to the, to the the next newsletter? Um, that way we can we can build a little awareness here, but I think again, safety first. Um, I think we've had more complaints that the brush is going so far into the street, maybe it ends up being a little compromised. I'm hopeful that there's no tickets being you know, made on this. So. A comment, please. Two comments. One is, I mean, I think I can't speak for Greg, but I think what he's trying to say is, we need a like a probationary period, so we really don't find the people this year. We give them a notice. You got to give them some time. As far as the putting it on the lawn, you have to. I put mine on the lawn, the claw came by, it didn't re ruin my lawn. People don't follow the rules. I did, everyone else puts it in the street and it's dangerous, it really is. So put it on your lawn, the claws didn't affect my lawn. Uh, I think this is an important ordinance, but we need a phase in time. Uh, 100%, well, uh, I will let everybody know, no summons is issued till the end of the year. Motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see another one for the public. Come on down. Scott Goldstein, 24 East Lunch Drive. Um, regarding the brush uh, removal, uh, I've complied 
the patrol come by, came by, they uh, dug up the lawn, they also broke the uh, cobble, the cobblestone curbing in front of my house, okay? So uh, that was really a disincentive for me to do that. Uh, my personal issue with the LEAF, I think it's a great program. The issue is that people start putting this stuff out weeks in advance or we're behind schedule and ends up sitting there for a month or so or into January, which really becomes a nuisance to the community. So if there's any ordinance that you want to move forward on this, would really be a time frame that is strictly enforced that you can't put it out by such and such a date, okay? Because it, it's you're driving by this for many months. Uh, the other issue that might help is we just went through revising all these ordinances for uh, uh, parking, uh, stop signs and other intersections. You can go case by case on streets and prohibit them in certain locations where it's a safety issue. You can also set an ordinance as far as how many feet out from the curb that your brush pile may exist. Just a suggestion. Thank you. First part is in there. Yeah, thanks for your comment, Scott. The first part is in there. Uh, the ordinance provides that no property owner shall place or cause to be placed any brush or leaves for collection more than one week prior to the start of the collection period. So um, just as background, um, DPW reached out to me um, as part of the police departments looking at all these items to try to do some ordinance cleanup. Um, and the one thing I was struck by was that the DPW puts out you know, these regulations on how the brush program is to work, but they're not backed up in ordinance. So it's kind of like a voluntary um, cooperation situation unless you codify it. So that's, you know, what's going on here, which is basically taking the rules that have been sent to everyone and putting them into the ordinance. And don't we have a person that's in charge of uh, code enforcement um, and having that person go around community and leave a nice note that they're not in compliance with the ordinance just to remind people that violated Yes. Motion. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Didn't look up again. Kathy. Um, Kathy Weber for Duncan. Uh, just two things on this ordinance. I think um, the critical part of it is communication. So I would like to offer two suggestions. Um, one, that in addition to communicating this to homeowners, to the extent possible, if there's any way we can communicate to landscapers or professionals. I know that's the homeowner's responsibility, but um, to the extent we could, at least with those perhaps that are home out based Because the reality is on the leaves, I, I, in my neighborhood, I think everybody's pretty good about their own branches. But, you know, I don't know anybody that, hardly anybody that does their own leaves. Most of the leaves are getting blown when the grass gets done by the landscapers. And um, on the DT, DPW piece in terms of the pickup, if there was some way on the township website to put a notice from the DPW of, okay, this is week one and we only got this far, so next week we'll get this far, or we're behind a week, so now we're on this week, or some kind of way to communicate in a little more real time um, how they're actually doing. So if we know, oh, okay, they're two weeks behind, we can hold up. That's all. Joe. Joe Crowley, 15 Evie Road. Um, just a question on the, the time frame. I, I get not putting leaves up weeks ahead of time. They blow around and stuff, but uh, it says no brush either. So if I trim my shrubs now and the pickup is in December, I, you know, yeah. where do I keep my pile? Or if a tree comes down in a storm, uh, to me, I don't see um, I don't see the safety hazard in branches being out, uh, you know, when they're out. Uh, particularly if they're in some place that's just a little discreet on the edge of the property line. So, question, uh, any comments or thoughts on that from anybody? Yeah. I don't know if I understand your question, Joe. What are you, what are you asking us? So we have the first part, part of that ordinance is that you can only put uh, brush or leaves out one week in advance of pickup. Um, if I trim my shrubs now, okay. So it, 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 that's involved. I think it's a recommendation, Joe. Like at the end of the day, you know, is this a don't do something stupid kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Motion. Roll call. Mr. Bontampo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. Ordinance 2019-17 is an ordinance amending 3-1.7 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Homedale and establishing a section titled Engine Breaking. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public Scott Goldstein, 24 East Lawn Drive. I drive a standard. What's the difference between engine braking and downshifting? It's a J brake for the trucks. What is a J brake? So they use the, they, what they do is they downshift. To, so if they're in, if they're coming down a hill and they're in fourth gear, they automatically shift down the first gear to make the engine slow the vehicle down. Is, isn't that the same as downshifting? No, I, I, actually, it's 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 a, a jake brake is a uh, it lets the compression off the engine. That's that very loud noise you hear. Um, you're, so you're you're relieving pressure from the engine, not taking pressure off the brakes. You don't have to downshift, uh, but it's extremely loud. So we're just banning it from township streets. We get a lot of complaints from people that live in certain roads. Of, where trucks are approaching intersections and they use their jake brake, which they really don't have to. They, if they hit the speed limit, they won't need their jake brake. Right. Um, I assume the, um, the town will be posting signs near those intersections, alerting the drivers to as prohibited. Um, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> Ours, we're we're, we're bringing it, this ordinance bans it in town, so there will be signs at the at the uh, entrance to town no jake brake, no jake brake you without a town. Okay, thank you. Public and the public, see another public motion. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Gritelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. The next ordinance is Ordinance 2019-18, an ordinance amending Section 3-8 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Home Delta titled Curfew for Minors and Hours Established. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Public, see no public, motion. Motion. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. The next ordinance is Ordinance 2019-19, an ordinance amending various sections of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Homedale contained in the Chapter 7, Traffic Part 1, titled On-Street Regulations. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. No public. R roll call. No, no, I'm saying Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontemps? Yes. Mr. Gritelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. Ordinance 2019-20 is an ordinance amending section 17-2 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Homedale titled Clear View at Intersections and to be retitled Right of Way Maintenance. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Ralph. Hello again, Ralph Blumenthal, 41 Stony Brook Road. I think this ordinance is in conflict with one you adopted earlier. Because of the same reason I described earlier with regard to sidewalks, most of the trees are in fact on town property. They're within that 12 to 13 foot behind the curb but before the property line. Okay, maybe you can ask a homeowner to shovel a sidewalk. But now you're asking them to trim a tree that is owned by the township. That conflicts with the previous ordinance which says you're not supposed to damage township property. Now, damage and trim are, you can argue how that's going to be defined. 
Uh, one question I have here is why 20 feet? I don't know where that came from. Laurel Avenue Bridge is 12 and a half feet. And off, you drive around, you'll see an awful lot of trees hanging over the street, which you like, which are under 20 feet. The pairs along South Holland, half of which are on fully town-owned property, are mostly under 20 feet. Maybe 12, maybe 15. You trim those to 20 feet and you butcher it, very simply. Uh, township, there's a lot of these trees on even township property. The township hasn't done it either. And they don't have the equipment to do it. You can reach up to 10, 12 feet with a pole saw. But you talk about 20 feet, you need a bucket truck. The town doesn't have one. There are utility wires crossing many of our local streets under 20 feet. So I'm not, you know, you want to keep the right of way clear. Certainly sight distances at intersections. There's a point to that. No question about it. But I think there are a lot of other circumstances here that have not been fully looked at as to who's responsible for what. And I believe the town, if anything, the township has been remiss in what it's done on its, in front of its own property. Thank you. Anybody else in the public, Jen? Jenny Blumenthal, 41 Stony Brook Road. Uh, this ordinance proposition is falls into the category of be careful what you wish for. Back in October of 2008, the town had a grant from the state to do a tree inventory, which was taken under consideration, received, and I believe there's a CD with all the information collected at that time in Denise Fritz's file, wherever that went. At that time, it, the work was done by Davy Resource Group, which is a national, well-established arborist organization. And they were given the instruction to determine the status of the health of all of the trees in town that were along the streets and in some designated parks. And I looked at the executive summary this afternoon, and 11 years ago, they ascertained that there were 2,822 <coughs> trees listed as needing some sort of attention here in town. That was 11 years ago. They, re they recommended 377 trees on township property that needed to be removed immediately, never mind ones that they could look at, Never mind hundreds of them that needed pruning in various degrees of severity. 580 of them were rated priority one pruning. They were all on township property. These trees, some of them have gone down already. Uh, a couple of years later, we got another grant from the state that permitted the removal of mostly black locusts from Bayonet Farm driveway past the old cemetery and down part way to village school before we ran out of money. And I'm very happy to say that that was one area of town that the trees didn't fall down in the street after Sandy. They did all over the other place. Also, all of us have heard at four and five year intervals, whenever JCPNL comes by and does the pruning of the elect of the uh, electric wires. The electric wires are on the top of all of the power poles. Underneath those wires are Comcast wires and telephone lines. JCPNL is only interested in the electric lines. So they come through and they prune all the trees way up there. Heck with anything that's down below. As soon as they get through, the phone rings off the hook here in town hall all these terrible, terrible people, they've ruined my trees, I don't know, I've lost all my property value. <laughs> but meantime, if you drive through town now, the trees are touching in the middle of the street and they look beautiful and everybody loves them. And if any of you have ever had to hire an arborist to trim up your trees, to remove one tree can be 600 bucks. 
people are not going to do that. So if you want these trim, trees pruned, and 11 years ago, as I said, Davy said there were over 2,500 trees that needed to be tended to, and the town had done one thing. Not true. Not true. Hold on. Because only because I get the phone calls from the zoning enforcement officer when people request trees to be removed, whether they be in conservation easements, rights of way, there, there is a process in place. They call the town, they ask if they can be removed, and I can do. I can attest that um, I can't recall a single time where we've ever denied somebody um, the ability to remove a tree that is hazardous, especially Holmdale, which, which has an abundance of tulip trees. Tulip trees are a big problem in Sam. And silver maples. We have always approved the uh, removal of tulip trees. Even and now, when, when, as you know, when they're in a conservation easement or a water easement or a utility easement, whether if they need those permissions, um, the the process has been followed, and we have gone. I have personally gone out there with our head of DPW, Victor Stevens, and we've gone out there. We've assessed the assist situation, and we've always um, permitted uh, that resident to remove the tree. And in certain circumstances, if it's a if it is. Um, blocking a right of way, or if it's blocking um, uh, a sidewalk or something, the town does come in in certain cir 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 certain circumstances, and they will. Our DPW people will come out with with a schedule. You know, they'll, they'll schedule a time, and they will come out and they will remove the brush or the tree if it's creating hazard. They have done that. I can. But I can the problem that. is that that is reactive. Well, it will, and I think what you're go, looking for here is to, be for us to be proactive, and that is very, very expensive. It is, and um, this week, this just, we just you can't. You can't do you can't it. Do so no you know, why put this in but an can, ordinance but what that you can do is nobody you can, can, you can What you enforce. do is what, what it does is it gives our law enforcement, it gives our town and our zoning enforcement officer the teeth that they need. To enforce these um, these these hazards. And, and I mean, for instance, um, it's not on my property because it's on a green acres that happens up, to be It adjacent. backs up what needs to be done. There's there's a, a, cherry, the a Japanese cherry tree that's all tangled up in a light fixture. Yeah. It's too high for Raph to fix. I won't let him climb up on a ladder to cut those branches off, but you can hardly see the light fixture because of the cherry. It's it's on a green acre section. It's not really earth shaking. If it falls down, it falls down, and we'll go out with a chainsaw and we'll clean it up. But we're kind of strange people. We rake our own leaves. We mow our lawn. We take all of our brush and stick yeah. it in our backyard. That's strange in today's world. Yeah. I know, but that's right. what happens when you got brought up Good in work. New England. Good work. Thank so you. Thank you. Think twice about this. Thank you. Anybody else from public? Motion. Motion. Roll. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. The next ordinance is Ordinance 2019-21. It's an ordinance amending Section 4-1 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Holmdale titled Alarm Systems. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Seeing no public, motion. Motion. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Cotelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? I, I think this is the most important ordinance of the night. I don't think people realize how often our officers get called out for false alarms numerous oh, times in the night. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yes. The next ordinance, Ordinance 2019-22, is an ordinance amending section 7-22 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Holmdale titled Traffic Controls for Street and Highway Construction and Maintenance Operation. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in Town Hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. Scott? I, I just need clarification. Is this the one with the shared, shared service agreement with um, Aberdeen for the light, the traffic light on, on, on No, it's, it's not. Motion. Roll call. 
Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Catelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines. Next ordinance is 2019-23, which is a bond ordinance of the Township of Homedown in the County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, to authorize the funding of the township share of the cost of the acquisition of the development easement, to appropriate the sum of $400,000 to pay the cost thereof, to make a down payment, to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation, and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. This ordinance was published in the Asbury Park Press, posted on the bulletin board in town hall, and copies have been made available through the clerk's office and on the table in the rear of the room. <coughs> Seeing no public, public, Ralph. Ralph. Ralph, Louis Paul, 41 Stony Brook Road. Just to put it on the record, I believe what we're talking about here is the property that's on the west side of 34, currently owned by HMF. And what this amounts to is a as he stated here, a deed restriction, development easement, so it'll be restricted subsequently to only farming. And hence, we won't get 10, 15 houses on that property. Or 100. So I think this is a good ordinance to adopt, and I support you doing so. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's strange. <laughs> Motion. Mr. Bontempo? Yes. Mr. Gatelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. Departments? Chief? Good. CFO? We want, excuse me, one resolution to pass tonight is the capital budget amendment. Uh, it puts our capital budget that we was in the adopted um, budget and just amends it to for the ordinances that we've uh, done thus far this year. Okay, um, I need a motion on that then? Okay. Yeah. Motion? Second? Yeah. Roll call. Mr. Botanco? Yes. Mr. Gatelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Yes. Dr. Pascucci? Yes. Mayor Hines? Yeah, you know, while I have the two of you, I, you know, something's been bothering me all night to executive, and um, I don't know if I need a motion for this, counselor, or you know, I think over the last five months, Chief, you, you've, you've done an amazing job. And Bill, since you've been on board, uh, so many things have been highlighted. Um, I have an ask. I have an ask that we go back to January 1, previous to both of you taking over. And I'd like to have an independent audit come in and run a list of all checks being caught to all third parties. Uh, we need to begin the process to make sure that everything is as clean, as transparent as possible. And uh, the job the two of you have done has been amazing. And I, I just, I would find great comfort if we could get an audit, an independent audit, separate to come in and just, I want to know for the taxpayers of Homedale that every single check was cut and followed the correct process and that it's transparent and we understand who it is. I don't know if I need a motion for that, Councilor. You can certainly make a motion for that. I would like to make a motion for that. Well, I can second that, but I have a question for Bill. I think the mayor is asking for an auditor, an independent auditor to come in. Independent of the firm. Independent. Totally independent. Yeah, we'd have to hire somebody with professional service. So we'd have to go out. I want somebody independent, fresh eyes. I mean, this has been highlighted to me, and, and I'm uncomfortable with it. And we have an obligation, as much as I want to get things done, you know, maintaining a fiscally responsible thing has always been my number one priority, and I want to make sure it's done. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Bontempo? So, so is there a motion not to hire a third party? Is that is that what the motion is? Well, we have to go out for a proposal. A bid? We, we well, proposals, professional service, we can get a proposal. Yeah, just to clarify, um, the township has an auditor uh, who completes your annual audit. If you are looking for that individual <laughs> to complete a further function of work, if you wanted a third party, like Bill's saying, you would have to go out, procure that person, that'll require a vote. I want independent. Meeting. I want someone that has never has nothing to do with anything here. Anything particular, Eric, that you're nervous? Or Listen, I think that at the end of the day, some things have been highlighted to me, Rock, and I'm sitting here and I'm, and I'm worried, and I want to make sure that somebody that's got nothing to do with this town could come in and ensure me that everything is followed process and that we're doing everything right for the town taxpayers of Homedale. And I see nothing wrong with it. What time? I don't see anything wrong with it either. 
even with the best administrator in the world. <laughs> <laughs> to, to cover what time period? Well, right. From January 1 until these two gentlemen took over. So, right. for the last seven or eight months. Okay. So, there's a motion and a second. Let's do a roll call. Roll call. Mr. Mr. So yeah, yes, on the motion to hire a third party order, correct? So yes. I, I, is that? Yes. It's the mayor's motion, yeah. so it's yeah. a third party. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Gertelli? Yes. Mr. Nicholas? Absolutely. Dr. Pescucci? Yes. Mayor Hunt? Yes. Um, attorney? Uh, no specific report. I'm available for any questions, Mayor. Engineer? Nothing specific, Mayor. Boards, let me see, I want Tom last time. Rocco, I'm gonna start with Greg. So just a quick question for one. You, you sent us an amended bill over 300. Was that included in the consent or was that, do we need to do no, a second was, motion for that? No, it was included. Okay, it was fine. included. So no other update there. Thank you. Rocco? Of course, I got something with fire and I would like if all you guys chime in and at least give me a, a yes if this is true. I believe we started all this and our one purpose now Main purpose is a centrally located firehouse. So I would like everyone to say- On account of three? On account of three, mm -hmm. yes. 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 All right, so now we're gonna go forward. Where we are is first aid has been meeting with the architect. Uh, remember one of the plans is a new first aid building and retrofitting the old first aid fire building. So they're back and forth with the architect with their wish list. Uh, doesn't mean that's the way we're gonna go. It's one of the ways we're going. Fire department officials, one of their main one was away on a Mercy deployment, so they're meeting with the architect this week to go over their wish list for the combining that building into one. So if we can get that done, then that might be the way we'll go. But this is still a work in progress, and I would like to hopefully have those architect numbers so next meeting we can discuss it as a committee to see which way we're going. Retrofitting the building, new fire building, new first aid building or something out of the ordinary, but we gotta get moving on it. And right now, uh, like I said, the architect's been meeting with the first aid, and now we're gonna get them to meet with the fire, and then hopefully we should have a cost benefit analysis and we'll get you guys uh, uh, where we wanna go. And again, if we can't make everyone happy, it's our decision. We have to make the decision for public safety as to where we're going. Rocco, do we? I don't remember, I know we briefly spoke about it, but for the public sake, I know that we're working on some incentives. Um, where, where are we at again with that? Do we, we have to check the legal? The last I heard is before council to check the legality, okay. and then each of us was gonna look, I believe you all got a copies. Right, so we're gonna get some legality, and then hopefully the next meeting, or by the latest in October, we will vote on that as a way to continue to support our drive for more volunteers. Yes. And I know some people had a, a worry about first aid meeting wanting to jump on this. Well, conversations I had with first aid, they're not really into this type of plan. They like other things. So I don't think this is gonna cause a big ruckus amongst first providers. And I think- And again, this is way. one of the top priorities that the firemen are asking for, correct? They want it. They okay. want it. Okay. And one other quick thing, can I ask, now that we got this budget stuff all done, CFO, what about the fire truck? Can we now order one? Or how is that going to work? No, we need to. Go ahead. Um, the, the fire truck was not actually put in the capital plan. We're going to have to amend the ordinance to uh, part of that five million has to be amended to state a fire truck because the useful life of that is different than that of the building. And in that initial thing, it wasn't just like more of a blanket thing. It was for it, it basically said building. It said a construction of a. Uh, Bill, I, I could be wrong, but wasn't building. the fire truck separate from the building? We fire had that originally in the capital budget. And, uh, it was com in the final documents we had was all combined. And that's the way it went through the bonding attorney. And the day of the introduction, we realized that, and we said we. He said the easiest thing to do would be to adopt the, the um, ordinance and just amend it for that purpose. So we can do that next meeting. Yes, we can let them know. And, and to be clear, that's because the bonding has a different life cycle? It's a different life cycle, so it, it we just can't start taking something, a building for 30 years and, and you know, commingle it with a, a, a truck that may have a life of 15 years. See, my impression was it was for fire, pub, public safety, but if that's not true, I'd like to have that on the next agenda so we can get that fire truck. We were going to need a dollar amount. I figure because we got to split it out. So maybe if I could ask the administrator, you give a call to the fire chief. They had a truck in mind, 
Let's order that truck. There, I believe the fire guys are at this conference this weekend, Rocco, and that's what we were waiting. But but I'm well, whatever. Well, we'll just it. with the with the incentives, just talk to the first aid. I did. I talked to the chief personally, one okay. on one. All right. And uh, I can go on. more offline. And he, he had he didn't really mm -hmm. want to be involved in the way this is structured. He didn't think it was good for first aid. He's happy with doing other things for first aid instead of this. Okay. This kind of incentive. Okay. And that was talking to Chris to shut up. You know, just this work this just, just yeah, just work, work it all out so it's all Yes, I don't want to go there to be a feeling. Anything else? No. Actually, Mike, just, to, hold on a minute. <coughs> just to confirm, I'm gonna get a price from the fire company for the truck. We're going to get that to Bill and he'll start working with the bond attorney to get that resolution. The rest of the committee is for Yep. At the real quick, point. I just want to make sure the public's clear on this as well. We passed the capital budget included up to five million dollars for fire safety building nothing's been bonded for correct correct so we including the truck so we have to move forward with an amended we, we have to amend the portion of the ordinance that reflects five million dollars for a building because it apparently that was a building and a vehicle so after we adopt a revised ordinance capital ordinance then we have to go and adopt a bond ordinance to buy a truck. No, we, we, already, we already adopted the bond ordinance. We're amending the adopted bond ordinance. So the, the oh. ordinance that we adopted previously, we have to amend that five million and separate the portion of the truck out of there and reduce the amount of five million. We got to split that five million between building and vehicle. Hey, Bill, the prior year we put 500,000 in for fire. That was never spent. So we have the five million from this year and 500,000 from last year. And Bill, all, all of it, and just to piggyback on that, before the answer, I, 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 again, I am fairly certain within the capital budget there was eight hundred thousand dollars reserved for the fire truck. To the best of my recollection, the five million was above and beyond that. So I'd like to just. I'm asking just as a favor, just to please double check all the capital requests and go through that again, just to make sure. I mean, if if that was changed. Then yeah, we will look. We did have an issue of uh, there were a number of different versions that were out there. Uh, okay. Obviously, we had change of personnel, and we had to get some files off various computers. And yeah. the final one we had had five million dollars uh, designated for a building. And I will check for last year Thank to see if that happened. Thank you. And could you look? At, I believe there's some extra money in there too, maybe for paid fire personnel that we had that we can. But that's actually that was put in the budget as, as a line item. That right, was the general budget, budget, but that's not capital budget. No, but we can use that money. Well, no, because it's cap. It's it's general, not capital, Rock. But but again, well, I, again, well, you know, we have the dots and I's across some T's here, and that's why I'm very happy that we've taken some steps. But at the end of the day. You know, I believe that, the, that there was eight hundred thousand dollars allocated previous to that five million, and we'll have to double check that. Tom, do you have anything? Uh, a quick update on the land swap: the uh, county dragged their feet most of the summer until they appointed an attorney to represent them. The county uh, legal department subcontracts out negotiations. So after reviewing the memorandum of understanding that we all signed, they. Uh, and, and, and reviewing the title work, they're asking us to amend and revise that memorandum of understanding. Our attorneys have been working on that with the county attorneys. Hope to have it wrapped up in 30 days and we're going to revisit that uh, transaction. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. Uh, no other things from subdivision. It's public comment time. All right, let's have some new faces first. Ron. 